1975, they had a child. They got divorced soon after because one night the father who was drinking came to the house, threw the mother out, and locked the door with the baby in the crib. The mother broke the window, opened the door, took the baby out to his brother, to her brother's house. Now, over time, the father and the mother split. The father would get the child on uh, weekends, visitation. Three years old, the son is sitting there one day. The father didn't come for his weekend visit. Why? Maybe he was drunk. Who knows? But that child at three years old knew at that moment he was never going to see his father again. Listen to his heart. Later on, this alcohol caught up to the man. He wound up homeless. In 1982, at the age of 37 or 38, he committed suicide. So this son, or me, no longer had a father. Now, I do not tell you this story to feel sorry for me. I tell you this story because my life and their relationship to me is a miracle. First thing. The second thing, chances. You never know in life when things are over. So my last challenge to you is to when you go home, or before you leave here, if there is someone here or back home you've been meaning to talk to, just to say I love you, just to do whatever, do it. Because you never know when it's over. Now, as time went on, I used to go to the cemetery, and I still do, when I go to Philadelphia. And one time, I'm in the cemetery on Easter, and this little boy, about eight years old, Puerto Rican, sits down next to me and says, what are you doing? So I'm talking to my father, and he said, okay, he sat with me for about two minutes. Then he goes off, and he comes back with his little brothers and sisters, eight-year-old, six-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, I don't know. And they all came to me with this big jug of water. They came to me, and they came with their little hands. They gave me the jug of water, and I poured it all over my father's grave, all their little hands, and then like this, on my father's name. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen to that point. And then I started looking around the cemetery, and I started noticing Spanish names, Vietnamese names, Korean. And then I saw a very peculiar writing on one of these tombstones, or a couple of them. I didn't know what they were. So I started working at the Fund for American Studies. And I started getting transcripts from Georgia. So I finally saw what that ready was. It was Georgia ready. Because you see, when it's all over, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. We're all buried together. Again, take your chances. Keep dreaming, because once you stop dreaming, then you start dying. And you have to learn to believe in yourself. You guys are getting to the age where you need to start believing in yourself, getting those talents, and finding your path, developing your vision. Okay? Now, generosity. I have a word now. Generosity. The most beautiful gift you can ever give is of yourself. The most beautiful gift you can ever give is of yourself. When someone writes me a card or something, I value that more than I value any other gifts. If you sing for someone, or just tell them that I love you, or tell them something very nice, or the meaning tell them, the gift of yourself is the most beautiful thing you can ever do. And finally, family. Leadership, respect, and family. Now is the time to say goodbye to Amos 2008. Because now is the time to welcome you into my family, to their family, to Gandalf's family, to Bobo's family, to Kurt's family. I want you to let you know now that I'll always be there for you, whenever you need me. If you're ever in D.C., let me know. If you ever need anything since then, let me know. Because you've now entered a network of over 9,000 alumni we have around this world that are now available to you. Use them. Make friends in your countries. Make networks. Use them to get jobs. Use them just to make friends. And because all of you are leaders, you also need support. See, one of the greatest things you can ever learn to do is learn to ask for help. That is a sign of maturity, not weakness. When I left for Prague in late June, I had a dream for Amos 2008. But when you, the class of creatives, surpassed my dreams, 
went beyond more than I thought it ever could. It was all because of your hard work in this intense schedule. My name is Matthew Kwasiborski, and it will always be an honor and a privilege to be the director of APIS in 2008. Now, when you go back to your rooms after this, and you put your dresses on, or your shirt, your ties, and you button up your tie, or put your makeup on, or whatever girls do, I want you to take a moment when you're in the mirror, look in the mirror at your own eyes, and say, I did it in your own language. Then, at 3.30, for one last time, I want this class to be united, to walk from the dorms to the metro to the Carolinium. Unite with your heads held high. Show proud how proud you are of what you have accomplished. Show the pro former Prime Minister of Spain how proud you are of what you accomplished. Because he used to sit right where you were one day as a university student. He is no better than any of, all, any of us. And I want you to do this, because now this is your time. Because you are no longer the best of the best, but you are now the elite of the elite. <laughs> Go upstairs. All the Central Asian countries go upstairs. For